Retro is in. Vintage Halloween decor is trending hard this year. For my first DIY, I took one of these chalkboard sign from Dollarama and I went on the web and I got myself a picture that I decided to cut out on my scroll saw. And this is what it looks like. It's kids going trick-or-treating. I removed the pattern and then I painted the whole thing black. I took some clothes pins, separated them, and then using hot glue, I glued them together on their sides, building up each layer. And then I painted it black. This is going to be the door to my creepy haunted house. I needed the top part of the door to open, so I used a piece of placemat that I cut and folded it over. Then I added a clothespin and painted it black. This gave the door some weight for it to open. I then took some more clothespins and made some little shelves to put on either side of the door and I painted them silver. Then I glued the whole thing to another chalkboard sign for a base. Using my scroll saw, I cut part of the cat's ear because I wanted it to look more like a roof and I added a circle for a moon. I looked up vintage Halloween on the web and I got this picture of a witch. Then I used Elmer's glue and I placed her in the doorway to give out tricks or treats. I painted my moon with a yellow and white mixture and then added Waverly wax for all of the facial details. Just a few brush strokes and this creepy moon comes to life. I took this garden gate and I removed some of the spikes and I added them to either side of my haunted house. I had this little calendar from Dollar Tree and I changed the date to October 31st because I thought this would make a nice countdown to Halloween. I took my little trick-or-treaters and I went back and got the pattern again and decided to glue it back on because it gave a lot of details that I like better than just the black paint so I added that. Next, I wanted to add some embellishments. I had made some on a live stream a couple of weeks ago that I'll link in the description box. I had made these chip clips and I just removed the clip part and used the decorations for my little haunted house. I made some pumpkins in orange and this spooky green camo one. And here's my haunted house. Don't you think it's spooky? And the perfect countdown for Halloween. Next DIY, I wanted to make a spooky tree to go with my haunted house. So I used aluminum foil. I took out about six feet of it and I wrapped it around my arm at first. And then I took my arm out and I squished it and pressed down onto the counter. I had a light that I wanted to put in the back of it and I did need to make a hole. So just using scissors and very carefully, I cut out a hole big enough for the light and I tried it in. Next, I took some of this painter's tape that I got from Dollarama and just breaking off pieces of tape I covered the aluminum foil and I was going all around where the light was supposed to go and then I tried it to make sure that it fit I took some more aluminum foil and I made the end of it a bit wide but I squished all the other part and this was going to be for the arms 
And after I made the aluminum foil part, I stuck it on with the painter's tape. I decided I wanted to make the trunk a bit bigger, so I added even more tin foil and I just wrapped it around the bottom part and added more tape. And this is one of those projects where you're adding and taping, adding and taping. Next for the inside of my tree, I needed to add another piece of foil just so that when I put the light in, it held the light into place. And then I added more tape. I took another piece of foil flat and I placed it at the end of the arm and I used my scissors to cut out little fingers that I squished into place and then I added tape to each of the fingers just to give it more definition. You need to cover all of the aluminum foil with tape for this project. So make sure you have a lot of tape. Today, I'm participating in the Retro Vintage Halloween Collab hosted by Monica over at Up All Night DIY and Annie at Crafting with Indiana Jones. Make sure to check out their links in the description box and I'll put the playlist there as well. Once all the tape is in place, you're going to want to draw some eye holes on your project and a mouth hole and then use a pair of sharp scissors but be very careful and you can cut out your eyes and your mouth. You will need to tape up these sections as well and what I did was I cut up some very small pieces of tape and place them inside the eye holes and also in the mouth hole to cover up all of the foil. You want the foil all covered. And then I tried the light inside and I thought it looked so good. The next thing you want to do is mix some glue and water in a container just give it a mix and then I took some paper towel thin inexpensive paper towel is the one that works best and you want to drench it in the glue and water mixture then wring it out a little bit and then add that to your project because it's kind of like a paper mache so that's what I did I just kept uh, dipping my paper towel new paper towel pieces in the glue and adding them on. And when I got around the eye area, I did have to use this pokey tool to try and make sure that my pieces got in. Here's what my project looks like after I waited 24 hours for it to dry. Then I made a mixture of water and black paint and I painted the whole project with this watered down black paint. Now you will be using three colors of paint with this project. There's black, burnt umber, and also cinnamon brown. And I used deco art paint for this. Once I had the black paint on, I had some moss, and I decided to put that on in several different spots on my spooky tree. Here's how it looks so far and I think it's really coming together. I decided to put a little bit more moss down by the foot of the tree. Now I'm taking that burnt umber paint and I'm adding it on. Now the reason why we put the black paint on was if there was any holes or cracks when you put the brown on the black will show through. And once I've done the burnt umber, then I add on the cinnamon brown on top. You want to also make sure that you paint the inside of the mouth and the inside of the eyes to give it more of a uniform look. 
here's how my spooky tree turned out. I'm going to display it in my living room for a hauntingly beautiful look. He's naturally scary. Decorate your home for Halloween with this fun countdown decor piece. Your little ones will love changing the countdown each day to get excited for trick-or-treating and dressing up. You can take your Halloween decoration up a notch with this spooky, cool, haunted tree. Team it up with LED candles and dark flowers to create a stunning centerpiece. Be on trend with vintage Halloween this year. Decorate your home with these fun tabletop decor. Place them on a countertop desk or mantle to show some Halloween spirit. For more vintage inspirations, click on the next video.